Hey what's up guys, my name is Jonah, welcome back to my Game Engine series. So last time we added textures to our batch renderer, check out that video if you haven't already, and between the two of us it's been a really really busy week, so let's just get on with it. One of the things that we actually didn't do last time was the whole rotation situation, so we can't actually render a rotated quad at the moment with our batch renderer. This is still our old path. So how exactly do we get our quads to rotate? Now before this was really easy because we had this kind of transformation matrix as a uniform and we could just multiply it all in the shader and everything thing was, was good, but we can't do that anymore because we're basically baking our vertex positions straight in here. And that's kind of it. We're not actually, we don't have any kind of transformation uniform. If we were to have one, it would affect the entire batch of geometry. It wouldn't just be that individual quad. So if we want one certain quad to be rotated, we have to apply that transformation over here on the CPU side instead of on the GPU in the shader. And it's fairly straightforward to do that. All we really need to do is build up a transformation matrix like we would out of like a rotation matrix and maybe translation and scale as well. And then just multiply that with every vertex. That's basically doing exactly what our vertex shader would be doing for every vertex. It's just that instead of happening on the GPU in GLSL, it's happening on the CPU with C++. So let's get all of that sorted. The first thing I wanna do is basically copy this entire draw quad function. So we still need the, the appropriate texture index and all of that stuff. Let's go ahead and copy everything that we have here except for the old path, of course. We'll come down here. This is the one that actually takes in the texture. Let's do this one first. So I'll just uh, basically override all of this stuff. We're not gonna leave the old path. Um, we've got that inversion history anyway, just in case. But basically what we need to do is figure out the position. The way that we've been doing this thus far has been just position.x plus size.x. That was kind of our scale matrix, so to speak, and then our kind of translation matrix is just this position and that's it. But we're going to switch from that to actually using a transformation matrix for all of our draw quad functions. Now it's not strictly speaking necessary to do this because if the quad isn't rotated, we can easily just transform it and scale it using simple kind of addition and subtraction potentially. Like we don't have to like go through matrix multiplications. But for the sake of the code being the same across all of our drawing functions, I'm actually going to just make all of them deal with like transformations. Now, you could argue that performance wise, maybe this isn't the best thing to do, but until like someone profiles it and maybe I'll profile it in the future and we'll see what it's like, I'm not gonna change it back. And I'm just gonna kind of make it all the same across the board because that's just going to be easier, I think, for everyone. So in order to do that, we need four vertices to actually perform the transformation on. What I'll do first is actually build up this transformation matrix. So we'll have this transform here. And again, a transform is made up of a, a translation, a rotation and a scale. So we'll start by translating. And I really don't like this whole uh, like GLM, you know, situation here with any, anyway, I think that in the future we might actually wrap GLM with our own math library because as, as, as time goes on, this is getting more and more annoying for me. Anyway, we have a VEC3 position here, which is perfect. We've got our translation matrix. We'll multiply that with a rotation matrix. So we'll have GLM rotate and GLM map for one. And then we'll have our angle, which um, for now we've been using degrees. So we'll keep using degrees. Sorry, we'll just convert it to radians here. This will be our angle, um, I believe. Uh, what did I call it? No, it's rotation. We should call this angle in degrees or something like that to not be confusing, obviously. Uh, and then the axis, of course, is going to be the Z axis here. And then we have our scale, which is just going to be the size, essentially. So we have a vector size here. We'll grab that and this will be GLM mat for 1.0. And then uh, this will be, let's see, size.x, size.y, and then one. So we're not scaling the Z axis. Okay, cool, that's our transform. Now what we need to do is multiply this with each of the vertices that make up this quad. Now we don't have vertices and since we're gonna need these vertices for everything, right? We're gonna need them for every drawing function. I'm actually going to create them inside this init function. So if we take a look at what the vertices are gonna look like, let's do it maybe, um, it doesn't really matter where you do this. I might actually do this at the end and we, we might talk about reordering it in the future. But basically S data dot, we'll say quad vertices. Um, we're gonna have four vertices here. Let's go and make them. So let's see, quad vertex. Well, we don't really care about that. They're gonna be the position, the vertex positions. So maybe over here, I'll just add them to the end. Um, this is basically just going to be GLM vec four, we're gonna make them vec fours just so that they're easy to multiply with the uh, mat fours without having to convert them or anything like that. 
and we'll call them quad vertex positions. Okay, um, and then we'll have uh, obviously four of these. So that's that's that. And then if we come over here, so quad vertex positions zero, uh, we can set them up. So this is going to be negative 0.5, negative 0.5, zero for Z, and then uh, 1.0 for Y. And then we're going to repeat this obviously for each of our vertices. And we're just kind of drawing a quad where zero is the origin. It's gonna have a size of one by one. Um, and we're just gonna go clockwise. So this will be positive, this will be positive, and then these two will be positive as well. Pretty simple stuff. Okay, cool. So taking that into account now, uh, if we want to draw something, then it's going to be as simple as coming down over here, we have our transform, we just need to do quad position, quad vertex positions zero, and we want to multiply our transform with that. So transform times that, and that's it really. The only thing that changes here is going to be which quad, posi quad vertex position we access. So transform two, and then transform three or rather quad vertex positions, three. All right, zero, one, two, three. Looks pretty good to me. So now we should have rotation and everything should be good. Let's test this out. Now, obviously we have to do it for the for everything else, but we'll do it for this first. So if I come over here, um, we had, I think, uh, example layer, that's not right. Is it Sandbox 2D is what we're talking about. Let me bring that back. Um, so we had a rotated quad. What I'll do is I'll actually, we've got this mini checkerboard texture that we're drawing with a tiling factor of 20. I'm gonna try and rotate that. So I think rotation is the third parameter. So what I'll do is, um, well, we need to call draw rotated quad instead of draw quad. And then maybe like 45 degrees, that should be easy to see. So let's hit a five, let's see what happens. This should be 45. Now I do have a weird offset here because remember we've changed the origin now. The origin is now the middle of the quad, not the bottom left corner, which I think is better. So if we wanted it to be completely rotated around the origin, let's try zero, zero everywhere. And then we'll, yeah, we'll leave it as a size of one. And there we go, you can see it's perfectly rotated around the origin. And then a really quick way to make sure we're doing everything in the right order and everything is just to um, uh, just, you know, we'll translate it negative two and then try the rotation. And because that sentence I just said made like no sense, what I meant was we want to make sure that we're, you know, rotating the quad around its origin, not around the origin of the world. And if you do your matrix multiplications in the wrong order, then it's going to apply that rotation to something else. So it's important to uh, test that as well. Okay, cool, there we go, that's done. Let's do everything else now. So the way that this is gonna work is we're going to use these quad vertex positions everywhere. And we're also going to use this transform everywhere. Now, obviously um, a transform, you know, for something like, uh, let's let's start at the beginning. So a transform for this is super simple, right? All it really is going to be is just a translation and a scale. Um, you, again, like we could generate new vertices and then we wouldn't need either of these, but to be kind of, I guess, uniform across the board, um, we're just gonna do everything this way. So yes, this was kind of a uh, spontaneous decision, but I'm sure it's gonna be fine. And I think that it's going to make the code look a little bit more, uh, I don't know, balanced. It's gonna make the code look the same, which is gonna be good. All right. So filling this out. Now at this point, you know, you you know, like th these are gonna be the same everywhere, zero and one, right? So we could technically just, um, you know, we, we're getting to the point where since these are all the same and these are like, look, look upable, we'll say, like they're predictable and they're basically the same. I mean, they're four different values, but they're the same for each quad. We could just convert this into a for loop that iterates through and gets all the data and I don't know, we might do this in like the next revision, but for now, uh, we'll just leave it like this. Okay, so we have the transform with all the quad vertex positions, and then this is, yeah. Okay, great, so moving on. Uh, this is our draw quad with a texture. So again, what I'll do is I'll copy the transform, and you'll note this of course is not the rotated quad. It's just a regular quad, and then we'll just grab this, and we should be good. Uh, let's copy all of this stuff. Whoops. Three, two, one, zero. This just feels like I'm programming normally. It doesn't even feel like a video to be honest. So <laughs> I hope I'm not going too fast for you guys. I'm just literally going as fast as I can because uh, I'm not gonna have time for dinner if I don't. Um, okay, anyway, so personal problems aside, uh, we have this 
size and rotation. Okay, so we have this function that, that is a color that's rotated, okay? So to do that, I mean, we'll basically just take this, I guess, because we haven't converted this at all. And this was just a transform with a rotation and yeah, it's pretty much the same. So I'll grab this, including the transform. This was our rotated, draw rotated quad textured, right? We'll grab that, we'll paste that into here. Um, and then, so we had a texture index. This should be the same as what we used for the white texture. And I don't think it has a tiling factor, does it? No, that's showing up as uh, red as well. So we'll, we'll copy and paste those here so that we have a text index. Um, and maybe I should have called it texture index. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, and I think everything else is going to be good. So we have translation rotation scale, but this is now for a rotated quad that is a color. Let's delete this old path situation. And we can, I'm sure we can clean up some of the other stuff, but let's test it first. So we'll have a rotated quad here. Now you'll see that this takes in radians. Now we changed it to take in degrees. So yeah, I mean, we should probably take in radians because that way it moves the responsibility of converting into radians to the client rather than, the, than always having to do it. And anyway, it's probably better that way. But for now, we might leave it like this. Uh, let's see. So. Yeah, so we're, ro we're rotating this. What is this? This is some kind of like red quad that's rotated. Let's move it in the positive X direction. And then everything else is gonna be a little bit weird, remember, because we used to be, the bottom left corner used to be like the anchor point, I guess, or the origin for uh, for these. Now it's moved. Okay, so yeah, we have a rotated quad. Looks pretty good to me. Maybe let's add a little bit of animation. So we'll say static float rotation. Uh, equals zero and then rotation plus equals time step times like 20 or something. I don't know. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll set the rotation here. So the checkerboard texture should now rotate. I guess we could have made the, uh, the quad do it as well, but yeah, there we go. So this is rotating. All right. looks good. And we can actually probably make that times 50 or something. Um, all right. Uh, and then what else do I want to do? So the background, which was, I don't even know what the background was. It's the big one. So what's the big one? Um, 10 by 10. So it's gotta be this one. Um, yeah, let's see. The cool thing is now, since we've kind of, uh, and we can just, I guess we can just do GLM back three zero. The cool thing here is that since zero is the origin, everything, you know, we, we can draw this as zero. We don't need to like calculate how big it is and then offset it by half that amount. None of that stuff. We can just rotate it normally. Um, or rather we can just position it normally, which is going to be nice. All right, cool. Uh, and then we've lost our other one, which is, ah, uh, it's because I set that to zero. What was it at before? It was negative 0 0.1. Okay. Let's leave it at that because of the whole, you know, Z kind of sorting situation. All right. And there we have this. All right, cool. And then we've got that as well. So that looks pretty cool. Um, now we've got everything working correctly with rotation in batch rendering. Everything that you see being drawn there, of course, is one draw call, which is what we want. Now, uh, what I wanna do is make a quick pass on this just to clean it up because I don't think we need everything, do we? Like we used to have, I guess we still do though. Like we used to have, you know, a quad vertex array and, but we still have that. It's just, we use it, we've repurposed it. So maybe there is not much cleanup to do. Maybe everything is good. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just leave it like this. Um, one thing I might do is for a name text index to, no, I guess I should be, if anything, I should be more verbose. So we'll say texture index. We'll just make sure it's called texture index everywhere. Just using visual assist here. Um, yeah, that's it. I don't know what else to do. I think that's it. I think we've done everything we set out to do. A little bit of a quick episode for a change, which is nice, but yeah, there we go. We've got the rotated quad. Obviously it's rotations working now. It's all still drawn in one draw call and performance is well, at the very least it's above 60 FPS. I'm sure it's a lot more than that. But um, that brings me to my next kind of thing. And that is the fact that now that we've got this batch renderer that's capable of rendering, well, everything that we were rendering previously, but now batched together into one draw call, we should probably do some kind of performance profiling and see, first of all, uh, what the performance is like. I would love, would love to get some like frame counters and stuff like that on the screen. Um, I also want to get some statistics and maybe some controls for the renderer so that we can, you know, maybe stress test it. That's another thing that I want to do. I want to design some kind of stress test for this, but then I also want to, um, 
control the size of the batch. So I want to be able to say, hey, can you please make the batch 10,000 like we've done, but we've done that as a, like a static constant. I want that to be variable. I want the renderer to be able to adapt to that. And we also need to test all the kind of edge cases, so to speak. They're not really edge cases, but stuff like, um, you know, what happens if we render more than 32 textures? What happens if, I don't know, we render more than what we've allowed in a single batch? Does it successfully start a new batch and does it render properly? Stuff like that. We need to basically make this into a little bit of a batch rendering playground to make sure that first of all, everything works, but also I am interested in like the performance metrics and stuff like that. So that is the plan. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Patreon.com forward slash the channel is the best place to help support me and this channel and this series and Hazel and everything like that. I've been live streaming there every single week, apart from this week. Um, but check that out. Uh, you can also watch the streams after they've been streamed. So on demand, um, and there's like probably over six hours of streams at the moment available to you. Um, and I've just been developing Hazel dev, the stuff that you guys saw. I also made a video if you haven't check it out. It's, um, the whole kind of Hazel 3d environment maps and the HDR stuff that I've been doing for that. That was completely live streamed. So you can, if you want to see how I did that and how I implemented that, then patreon.com forward slash the channel. And, uh, you'll be able to watch those streams back and see how the amazing process of making all of that. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay safe. Love you all. Goodbye.